Aloha and good evening. This is Edwin Boyant. Starting on time, because someone has to. <laughs> so we'll be taking a look at Shadow of the Conquerors, Chronicles of Everfall, book number one. And this is by um, Shad Brooks. As a YouTuber, you may know him as Shadowversary. Or Shadowversity? Shadowversity. <laughs> All right. And I see Jeff Potts and RS Matrix say, I know nothing about this series, so that's good. Okay, yeah. We're going to do a little bit of a cold read. I haven't rehearsed this or practiced this. I may not know much more than you. It's out from what I've heard from Mike Miller. And hey, there's Lady Celtic Moon. She says, howdy again. So you can buy this on Amazon.com. I purchased the Kindle edition. And let's read his blurb. Oh, Lady Celtic Moon says, I have read the book. Okay, well, you might be able to catch some of the questions for us then. Very good. Let's read the blurb, though. Who better to fight back the darkness of the world than the one responsible for most of it? Dalen, once known as the Great Bastard, the Scourge of Nations, Dalus the Conqueror, has lived in hiding since his presumed death. Burdened by age and tremendous guilt, he thinks his life is coming to an end. Unbeknownst to him, he's about to embark on a journey towards redemption, where his ruthless abilities might save the world. Many battles await with friends to be made, in a past filled with countless crimes to confront, all the while trying to keep his true identity a secret. Indeed, it might be too much, if not for the fabled power awaiting him. All right, and so... Let's see, this part of the blurb tells us about Everfall. Everfall is a world of per per perpetual day, where the continents float in an endless sky. If one jumps from the continent, they will fall for many hours before returning to the same place from whence they fell. Skyships rule the air powered by shining sunstone and industrial darkstone. A legendary order of knights bears mystical powers which they use to hunt out the dreaded shade. Monsters that regular people turn into if trapped in darkness for the length of a fall. Interesting. All right, so we've got sunstone. We've got, we've got darkstone. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this story time is my friend, Mike S. Miller, is adapting this book into a graphic novel. Let's see if we can find that image. Do I have a larger image of it? Yeah, let's bring this up. And this looks super cool. As far as I know, he has drawn and inked everything, and it's getting colored now. And this is definitely, this is definitely Mike Miller's art style. You should be able to recognize this if you are a. Uh, a follower or a reader of uh, Mike Miller's art. I wonder if these are the shades here, these monsters that were talked about. They look kind of zombie-esque or vampirish. It is pretty spiffy looking. All right. And then you can buy a copy at Amazon or you can go to shadmbrooks.com. And you can use you can use his links. And RS Matrix, I'm not sure. We'll have to we'll have to find out what kind of creatures they are. I'm doing a relatively cold read here. So I will be discovering at the same time you are. We'll leave this up and let's pull it up. I haven't rehearsed this. So let's see how it works out. And I'll slide chat over so I can keep an eye on that. Looks like it opens with a bit of... Uh, Rhaegar Targaryen says, It is overflowing with spiff. 
spiff for all. Or as Matrix says, I'm just thinking out loud as all. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about this too. We'll see. Here. And I called them vampire-ish. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. <laughs> we will discover together. And this is, again, this is the Shadow of the Conqueror, Chronicle of Everfall, book one. All right, now the blurb said, the blurb said that Dalen was fighting with a bit of age, so I guess we need an older voice. Is this old enough? <laughs> I'm all, almost half a century. I get the feeling that Dalen is a bit older than that, so we'll see. My name is Dalen Namaran, but most know me as the Great Bastard, the Scourge of Nations, Dalus the Conqueror. All right. Of course, I had a cookie right before I ran. <laughs> let's, let's do that one more time. My name is Dalen Namron, but no, most knew me as the Great Bastard, the Scourge of Nations, Dalus the Conqueror. Yes, contrary to what everyone believes, I'm not dead. This is no jest. Honestly, who would claim to be me? You'll find enough evidence in my home to prove what I say. I know this revelation will dis distress most people who survived my rule, enraged that I escaped punishment. But I haven't. The twenty years I've spent in hiding have been torture, where death would have offered me the rest I desire. My torment comes not from my fall from power, or that I live in squalor, but because of my endless guilt. Yes, that's right. I, Dalus the Conqueror, decree I was in every way the despicable tyrant the world claims I was. I murdered, raped, pillaged, and ravaged the world, all in the name of the Dawn Empire. Would you believe that? In all my actions, I thought I was serving the greater good. Regardless, I've come to know that nothing justifies what I've done. I wish there was a way I could fix things, to go back in time and change it all. But what is done is done, and I'm left to hate myself more than any person alive. I cannot express in words the depths of my shame. Every hour is agony, and I would have ended my life years ago if not for the knowledge shining through my soul that I deserve such a profound form of torture. But now my aged body fails, and death draws near, which I welcome as a long-awaited, if undeserved, gift. I could wait out the few falls I have left, but if I am to die, I'll see it done my own way. The world should be free of Dalus the Conqueror once and for all. And to that end, I plan to cast myself from the continent. I know. Poetic. I leave this letter so the world will know the truth. Dalus the Conqueror died hating himself and his whole life. As meaningless as these words are, I am sorry. I leave a, word, a world worse for my having lived in it and go to embrace the endless hell I so rightly deserve. If I am lucky, perhaps I'll be cast into outer darkness and my existence destroyed. Dalen Namaran, also known as Dalus the Conqueror, year 51 of the fifth day. All right, so a letter from Dalus the Conqueror. Hmm. 
Dalen placed the fountain pen beside his note, which lay next to the small leather-bound journal containing a brief account of his life. He had been as honest as possible, except for the part where he said that the Delavian dukes had sex with goats. <laughs> Dalen laughed to himself in long, grating croaks. Those stuck-up men were going to have a light, cursed time dispelling that one especially when the comment was running alongside so many sincere confessions. Why would he lie about the dukes when he was being so honest about everything else? Because he was a bastard, of course. Just not the type of bastard the world thought he was. At least not anymore. Also, the dukes deserved it. Dalen's dark brown eyes slowly focused to his hand, which lay on the desk. Wrinkled and age-spotted, it was a constant reminder of how old he was. It was because of reminders like this that Dalen avoided his own reflection. In it was nothing but a haggard stranger whose blue hair had faded to a sickly gray and whose face partially resembled a scrunched-up piece of paper. Dalen turned in his seat to face the never-ending stream of life-giving light shining through the windows of his home. A home fighting with Dalen to see who could be more decrepit. It was a sagging one-room structure, made of crumbling brick and cluttered with the necessities of life. An aged cabinet which sat near the door held jars of dried fruit and meats. A few tarnished forks and blunt knives were stacked on the washing bench. There was a cast iron stove for cooking in warmth sitting on a slate hearth next to a battered chest and a dusty bed. A sagging mezzanine hung out as a partial second story made of aged milled timber and was stacked with more chest, tools, nets, and other useful things. Small sunstones hung from the roof and iron fixtures, adding to the light from the windows. The only thing in his homes, the only things in his home offering Dalen an escape from his squalor were the two benches covered in halfway repaired clocks, children's toys, and generally anything that contained cogs. Those town folk who left these things with Dalen would have to find another tinkerer. Or tinker. Dalen sneered at the thought. Though he could find contentment in working with things, he hated the term tinker. He was an engineer. At least that's what he would have become if his life hadn't gone down a much different path. Instead of designing bridges and covering new secrets in sun forging, or finding new ways of employing darkstone and automations in construction. Dalen had ended up using his passion to design machines of war. That was all a day's length from what he did now. Dalen placed a hand on the back of his chair and forced his body to swivel out. With a concerted effort, he tried to push himself onto his feet. He failed and slumped back. All right, so if you've ever read Steampunk, I'm getting kind of like a, uh, a Steampunk vibe from this. But instead of Steampunk, I guess maybe this is Crystal Punk with these sunstones and these cogs here. But it kind of seems like it's in the same zip code, if that makes sense. And we've learned that this is a world of eternal sunshine. Backing up just a stem. Dalen placed a hand on the back of his chair and forced his body to swivel out. With a concerted effort, he tried to push himself onto his feet. He failed and slumped back. You black and useless legs, Dalen screamed out. He had gotten to the habit of speaking to himself over these many years. It wasn't like he had anyone else to talk to. I'd kick you if it wouldn't hurt so much. Not that you'd let me. Disloyal, backstabbing bastards. Do your bloody job 
and let me stand. Taking a deep breath, he heaved once and this time rose. Better. Dalen grumbled once on his feet. I really should be worried about how much I talk to my anatomy, he muttered. But every man talks to his pisser at least a few times in his life. That I've extended the practice to other limbs isn't too strange. <laughs> Dalen laughed to himself in long croaks. Not too strange. Light, I'm such an idiot. Looking down to his crotch, he added, Are you all right down there? Yeah, I know. Stupid question, considering who you have to put up with. Your family is nuts, and the neighbor's an asshole. <laughs> Dalen chuckled, which sounded more like he was trying to hack up Flim. He slowly shuffled across the floor to the large cuffed, just a corpse jacket hanging next to the door. Just a core jacket, okay. He slowly shuffled across the floor to the large cuffed, just a core jacket hanging next to the floor. Walking was a chore these days and quickly drained what little energy he had. Dalen took the coat and donned it over his vest and loose sleeved beige shirt. Moving to a bench, he took hold of the deep black piece of cube dark stone lying there. It resisted being picked up, as no light was touching its base. It may as well have been fused to the table. With his other hand, he took a shining sunstone bead from a small bowl on the desk and quickly touched it down into the dark stone's top. The closer the bead had come to the dark stone, the more the dark stone was repulsed by the brighter light, the table having creaked under the strain. But the stone's repulsion had been nullified as soon as the sunstone touched, which had released it from the table. Mark Scheinfeld says, got you cranked up in telling the whole neighborhood the story on Bluetooth. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we've learned something here. So we've got these two elements. We've got sunstone and darkstone. Darkstone is used, I don't know, is up. I don't know if it's a power source or a logic source, kind of like a CPU, but apparently when the when the dark stone is not charged up, it's kind of heavy and immobile. Dalen picked up the dark stone with two fingers at its corners, careful not to cover the sides from light, and dropped the sun sting, the sunstone bead back into the bowl. Dalen knew he didn't really need the dark stone. Falling through the barrier while touching sunstone would kill a person just as much. And the luminous pendant hanging upon under his shirt was made from just that. But Dalen was intending to kill himself. And if sunstone or darkstone would kill a man, surely touching both would be twice as effective. He never did anything by half measures. An odd thought came to Dalen. Has anybody ever fallen through the barrier while touching both stones? I've never heard of that happening. Is there a chance touching both stones won't kill me? <laughs> Dalen began to cough out a croaking laugh at the absurd, at the absurd thought. Of course it will, you light-blinded fool. Thinking it won't is believing two poisons will cancel each other out. Ha ha ha. With the dark stone in hand, Dalen walked to another desk and found a small wooden box. He opened it and a stream of bright light shone out. The box was lined with sunstone. The un only way dark stone could be easily transported. Dalen placed the dark stone within it and latched the lid. He then grabbed his coin pouch and slipped it into his coat's pocket. Dalen took another pouch that clinked when handled, holding even more money than the first. 
with difficulty, he hobbled outside. A soft breeze ruffled his coat, and the smell of fresh country air filled his lungs. Glancing to the sky, Dalen saw a black dot slowly moving westward. It was a sky ship. One could always see at least a single sky ship flowing through the air, flying through the air. And they always brought a sense of awe to Dalen. He loved sky ships, though he hadn't been so much as near one for years. Still, Dalen wasn't looking to spot sky ship. He looked further up and to see the faint underside of the very same continent whereupon he and everyone else lived. Telos. Interesting. So, in Shan's world, in Everfall, uh, here on this continent, Telos, stuff loops around. So if you can, if you're looking up at the sky, and I guess it's clear enough, you can see the bottom of the continent you're standing on. All right? We'll read that again. He looked further up to see the faint underside of the very same continent upon whereupon he and everyone else lived, Telos. This was a result of the top barrier of the universe. One simply couldn't exit the world when they reached its top. No, instead they re-entered the world from the other side. In this case, the universe's base. This had the same effect on one's line of sight, which was how Dalen could look up and see the bottom of the continent he stood upon. Dalen's eyes traveled along Telus's underside to its northern edge, then tracing down through the sky in between the mirror image of Telus above and the land he stood upon. Dalen found the plummet, the large misshaped landmass that fell through the world perpetually, a kilometer north of the continent, once the plummet reached the bottom barrier, it would re-enter the world from the top and fall all, all over again. This marked the length of the fall, whereby the people of Talos measured their times and seasons. Hmm. It's like a moon, but a little bit different. Daglin surmised the plummet to be only a quarter way through its fall meaning it was mid-high, or in other words, noon. Paradin should have arrived by now, Dalen thought, grumbling. Dalen's thoughts were interrupted as he noticed a man sitting in front of his house on what was left of a log railing. The railing made the border between his front yard and the brick-paved road running past Dalen's home. He wore the robes of a light bringer, the preachers and servants of the light. Dalen was expecting someone, but certainly not a bringer. Hobbling to the man who sat facing the road, Dalen called out in a disgruntled tone, Hey, you, what are you doing? The man turned to look at Dalen. He was at least in his fifties, yet still looked like a pup to Dalen's aged eyes. His face looked to have been chiseled from stone for all its sharp angles, defined jaw, and a prominent chin. He was clearly fit and strong. A common trait among Turasians, I think it's Turasians, T-U-E-R-A-S-I-A-N-S, Turasians, as identified by the bringer's dark brown skin and bright yellow hair, which was cut very short and faded at the temple temples. Oh, hello there, the man said in a voice so clear and enunciated he might have been a, a stage actor. He spoke in a cultured Hammeran accent and added with the fact that he was fully clothed indicated he hadn't been born in his native Turasian lands, that or hadn't lived there for long. The man stood, revealing that he was nearly half a head taller than Dalen, and looked at him with some of the most discerning eyes Dalen had ever seen, their color a dark blue. 
I had wondered who lived here. I don't mean to intrude, but I am waiting for someone who will be passing here out of fall. Uh, who? Dalen asked. He is a young man, though I don't know his name, only that I'm to meet him here. Dalen's home sat beside the main road from the village and has served as a recognizable marker, so the explanation made sense. All right, then, Dalen said. I don't suppose I need to worry about a bringer causing trouble. Indeed, the light bringer said with a smile. Rather, we bringers try to bring as much brightness as we can bring. He leaned in a bit closer and said conspiratorially, That's why we're called bringers. Dalen frowned as if he had just tasted something foul. I hope that that wasn't some retarded attempt at humor. Um, seeing as I'm not mentally disabled, I would have to say no. It was a simple joke. No, if, if you think that was a joke, you most definitely are mentally disabled. The bringer's mouth hung open, and he stared at Dalen stunned. Dalen leaned in, leaned in, and in the same conspiratorial tone the bringer had used had said, It was a joke. Insults are not jokes? Dalen shrugged. It depends on who you insult. I once asked the Tolson ambassador, if his ask was jealous of the amount of crap coming from his mouth, Dalen croaked a chuckle. <laughs> he nearly choked up a lung. The ambassador didn't have you arrested? No, he wanted to keep his head. You threatened him as well. Yeah. And he still took no action. He was too much of a coward. I hope you don't mind me asking, but how did you find yourself in a position to insult an ambassador? I wasn't a tinker my whole life. I've seen the world. Yes, well, it would have surprised me if you hadn't. I mean, you're looking at the world right now, after all. Don't be a smart ass, Dalen said, turning to make his way to the outside chair in front of his house. Each step was a struggle. Would you like me to heal you of your ailments? The bringer called out. Consider it payment for my intrusion, he continued, walking towards Dalen. Dalen turned back to him. Bringers can't heal old age. True, but if you're not sick, a healing will still grant you some temporary vitality. Sure, go ahead, Dalen said, waving a hand. The bringer placed the hand on Dalen's shoulder. His skin began to glow softly as the light moved to his hand and then transferred into Dalen's body. A warmth rippled over Dalen that brought with it vigor and lucidity. Any question of this man being a true light bringer had just been answered. Still, even with the healing, which made him feel like he had just had a good day's rest, Dalen's body was dying. He coughed. See, you can't heal old age, but the revitalization is welcome. It is a pleasure to serve. The rattle of a wagon announced Paradin's approach. All right, so we've learned something else here. There's, I don't know if it's magic or science. I, I don't know what the Lightbringer is channeling. I don't know if Lightbringers are something like Jedi or, or something of a kind. But there is some sort of healing spell, I guess. 
uh, light bringers or clerics. It looks like if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Dalen hobbled, hobbled past the bringer, surprised at the strength in his legs. The bringer followed him down the path to sit back on the log railing. Paradin's wagon was a very old dark stone machine, probably as old as Dalen himself, which was saying something. It pulled to a stop in front of Dalen's yard. The man atop had large ears and a wide mouth that formed an unfortunate appearance. All right. <laughs> I have large ears. I don't know if I have a wide mouth. The man atop had large ears and a wide mouth that formed an unfortunate appearance. Two beads hung on a length of hair to the side of his head, caught a tassel, one dull white and one a shining sun sunstone. This indicated Paradin had won two sword duels in the past, one against a person who had never dueled before, and another against a person who had won at least one. Light to ya, Dalen, Paradin said as the self wind failed to bother his messy red reed-green hair. And light to you, Bringer, Paradin said respectfully. The light bringer nodded back. May the light brighten your fall as well. You're late, Dalen said. Sorry about that. Fergan Ladonner came around making a fuss just as I was about to leave saying my son is paying his daughter too much attention. I had to deal with that old uproot before talking into Perinday. Not that it's wrong for him to pay courtesies to young women, mind you. He's marrying age, after all. But night come on me before I let any LaDonners marry into our families. Strawman says, no, you can't start another book. I, I, we're just sampling this one. We're just sampling this one. And I was, I was very curious about this. If you're just joining in, my good friend, Mike S. Miller, who is a comic book artist, is uh, adapting this into a graphic novel. And so a graphic novel is a fancy word for a, a longer league comic book. Okay. Uh and he's done all the drawing, all the inking, and I believe it's getting colored now, and it's getting close to completion. So this this graphic novel should be up uh, up soon. And I was just kind of curious about it. I've been saying I've been doing this for a week or two, and I was thinking, yeah, today's a, a good day to, to dive into this. <laughs> all right, let me take a step back. Sorry about that. Fergan LaDonner came around making a fuss just as I was about to leave, saying my son is paying his daughter too much attention. I had to deal with that old uproot before talking to Perinday. Not that it's wrong for him to pay courtesies to young women, mind you. He's marrying age, after all. But night come on me before I let any LaDonners marry into our family. Fergan is a shade's tit, Dalen said. And his kids would think half a wit is an endowment of intelligence. Light. Fergon's stupid enough to think Perinday should marry into the LaDonners if such a shadow ever fell on you. Shade, take me now, Peridon said in dread. He looked to the bringer. Are oh, you to accompany no, he's not, Dalen snapped. He's waiting for someone else. Honestly, I think I might turn this place into a skyport with all the traffic I've seen in fall. Dalen ended his grumble with a hacking cough and struggled to stay on his feet. Easy there, old timer, Paradin said, jumping off his open top wagon to help his left hand keeping the long sword at his side from swinging. Off with you, Dalen spat, hitting Paradin's hand away. I'm not so old that I can't stand on my own two legs. Paradin looked at him with insufferable concern. Dalen hated it. He had ruled the world. 
and now a peasant farmer was looking down upon him. Grunting, he shuffled to the other side of Puritan's wagon. You're sure you're up to traveling, Tinker? I'm fine. Shade it. But Dalen knew the small energy he had from the bringer's hill and wouldn't last. Indeed, the trip would sink to that. He heaved himself up onto the wagon, which was usually an impossible feat for him. Parrot and Slide and climbed aboard into the driver's seat. It was obvious the farmer didn't like Dalen. No one did, but this wasn't hatred. It was the dislike anyone had for spending time with the ill-tempered and old. <laughs> Dalen didn't mean to be so perturbed by everything. It was just that everything perturbed him. He didn't think he had been so easily annoyed when he had been young, and surely people hadn't been as patronizing. Still, like it or not, Paradin had to give Dalen a ride. It was payment for Dalen fixing the very wagon he sent upon. Paradin nodded respectfully to the lightbringer and worked the wagon's control levers. He pulled on the main throttle, which opened a hatch-like door to the darkstone driver fixed at the rear. With light now shining on the back of the stone through a few magnifying lenses, the wagon lurched forward, being pushed by the dark stone's luminous repulsion. Paradin put a hand on the large steering lever sitting in front to direct the wagon as it traveled. Okay, so this, like we were talking about earlier, if you've ever heard of steampunk, I think this is indeed crystal punk. And we've got, we've got light stone, or sunstone rather, and dark stone. Paradin put a hand on the large steering lever, lever sitting in front of him to direct the wagon as it traveled. It was an amazing means of transportation, far more than the animal pulled wagons of old, though it was one of the simpler dark stone engines. Even in his old age, Dalen was still enthralled by this technology, machines powered by light a never-ending resource. Of course, it was all thanks to Darkstone's natural properties. The wagon rattled on over one of the many brick roads Dalen had been seen. That's a odd. Okay. The wagons rattled on over one of the many brick roads Dalen had seen built during his time in power. The bumpy trip didn't help Dalen's health, and he coughed and hacked in pain regularly. At least the weather was fine. Rain would have made this trip unbearable. They passed a patchwork of cultivated fields, which sat over the rolling hills like a blanket. Many a farmer was out working their dark stone-powered plows, tilling the ground for the spring crops of barley, oats, beans, and potatoes. Groves of varying sizes were scattered throughout the paddocks, with many tree lines bordering the fields making windbreaks. Occasionally they passed an old ruin, most of them left over from the empires of the first day, which had ended with the first night. It was thanks to the first night that most of what stood in the distant past had been left in ruins. I've never been to the city before, Paradin eventually said, clearly trying to break the silence. Dalen couldn't be bothered to respond. My son wanted to come along with us. I might have let him if not for that mess with Fergan's daughter. Light, that boy is shading my day these falls. Skipping his chores, courting air-headed nits with his own head not too far away. What with it being in the clouds so much? The lad keeps saying he wants to join the Arch Knights. You wouldn't want him to be an arch knight, Dalen asked. If Parenday committed to practicing his sword more often, yes, the knights would reject him after the first weeks of trial with how he is at the moment. That's his problem. He keeps saying he wants all these things, but he isn't willing to work for them. Sounds like he just needs a good kick up the ass. I've tried that too. 
Light it makes me wish I were an arch knight, so I could use their magic to fix the boy's head. Dalen huffed. Light binding doesn't work like that. But I've heard the knights can control the minds of men. That's a myth. I've met many arch knights in my life, and as much as they've wanted to change my mind, they never could, though some of the stories are true. Like what? Incredible strength, speed, massive jumps. Some can fly. Some can heal incredibly fast. I've seen one cast lightning from his hands, but they're not invincible. I've seen arch knights die. All right, arch knights sound like they may have something in common, at least thematically, with Jedi. So we'll have to see. That, that archetype seems kind of similar. We'll see as we progress, though. You have... Peridon said with such shock, his eyes looked as though they would pop out of his head. I live through the fourth night, Peridon. The Shade are more than capable of killing arch knights. I wondered about that. I mean, you look old enough. But I didn't want to be rude. So, knight, what's it like? Dinglin replied with self-spoken words, about as terrifying as you can imagine. Darkness all around, while being constantly hunted by flying monsters. The ever-present risk that you might turn into one, if without light for too long. You've known people who've turned. My own parents... Light, Peridon said breathlessly. I, Dalen, I'm so sorry. Not your fault, Peridon. And I got my revenge. With the Arch Knights, we fought back the shade, killing thousands, and we brought an end to the fourth night. Wow, your life must have been I can't even describe. <laughs> Dalen huffed. That's not the half of it. Do you have any other stories? None that I really want to share. Oh, Perrin said, falling silent before curiosity once again got the better of him. So what have you got in that box there? None of your business, Dalen said, growing tired of the conversation. Peridon pursed his lips and sniffed, looking for it. <coughs> Dalen sighed and threw a small pouch into Peridon's lap that clinked as it fell. Here, I wanted to give you that. What's this? Open it. Peridon did, and his eyes widened at seeing the coin. Dalen, I, I can't accept this. It's more money than I make in a year. The pouch was full of golden quates, quates, Q-U-A-T-S, quates, worth a hundred grams each. Of course you can, and you will, Dalen said. You need it, what with how bad the winter was. Dalen, I put a rock in it, will you? And Peridon did, with not the least hint of annoyance. Honestly, who would be annoyed with the man, ill-tempered and rude as he was, after he gave them a pouch full of money? Dalen wasn't going to need it. And the truth was he had more stored away back home. He had more than enough coin on his person for the ship fare. Dalen had left his home behind, and he wouldn't miss it, though it was light-blindingly difficult. You know, I'm going to let those sirens pass by, so I'm not talking over the sirens. So, interesting concept so far. We've got sky ships, we've got sunstone, darkstone, we've got these creatures called the Shade. We've got these heroes called the Arch Knights. Lightbringers. 
So an interesting fantasy universe. All right. Dalen had left his home behind, and he wouldn't miss it, though it was light blindingly difficult to leave behind his sword, Imperius. If there was anything he wanted to die with, it was his sword like the kings of old. He could have wrapped it in a cloth so no one would recognize it, but he was too weak to carry the thing for the whole journey. So Dalen had to leave Imperius, Imperius, along with everything else. The townsfolk would probably ransack the place eventually, although once finding out who he really was, he'd be just as likely to burn everything he'd ever touched. No. Dark stone could move. That's an interesting transition. Interesting. Okay. Dark stone could move exceptionally fast when enough light shine on it. And the roads Dalen had seen built were still strong and smooth, facilitating faster travel. They easily crossed a hundred kilometers in a few hours passing the six stones that lay alongside the road to Cheromain, although one of the towns, Limet, barely earned the title. A commanding view of the land beyond revealed, it, revealed itself once they crested a small hill. Cheromain sat far away in a broad valley. The city was average size, at least to Dalen's eyes. He'd seen most of the great metropolises of Tillis in his life, and Charmaine didn't come close to any of them, especially not the nation's capital, Hydon, Dalen's former seat of power. But Dalen guessed that, to the locals, Charmaine would appear to be the largest and most bustling place they'd ever seen. And Charmaine had once belonged to the kingdom of Sunsen, which had declared war on Hamara. I think it's Hamera. I'm going to have to talk to Mike and see if I can get the correct promotion, pronunciations for some of these. Let me put this down. Hamera. Hamma. That's got to be Hamera. I may just be not doing the right emphasis, though. Sorry, this is a, I'm doing a cold read, so you're learning right with me. But Dalen guessed that to the locals... Charmaine would appear to be the largest and most bustling place they've ever seen. Charmaine had once belonged to the kingdom of Sunsen, which had declared war on Hamera at the same time the kingdoms of Daymar and Lumus did. After Dalen had executed the queen, in return Dalen had made sure not a single drop of noble blood remained. So devastating was his purge that many years later when he was defeated, the lands and peoples who once belonged to those kingdoms had no royal claim or identity and simply chose to remain with the new Hamera. Boy, that was a sentence. All right. Sky shops, sky ships spotted the sky like upside-down boats, though designed to be far more aerodynamic with huge variance between themselves. The larger traders and carriers queued at the registry station to pass through the city's shield net. The shield was made from a net of dark stone anchors, large square blocks of stone that encased a dark stone core. With no light shining on the cores, they were fixed in the airs, the same way the tectonic dark stone mantle held the continent in place. The anchors were spaced two meters apart from one another in a diamond pattern that formed a dome over the city. The anchors were so close that any skyship larger than a dory couldn't fit between them. Any ship that tried to fly through the shield separate to the openings on the ground and at the registry stations would run into the immovable anchors and get shredded to pieces. Why, well, that was a sentence too. All right, so somewhere here we do this, we do this transition, and I, I guess you need it. You need this exposition to understand the world, but you kind of go from this revealing 
exposition through these conversations with Dalen and and these two other people to now it's just an exposition dunk kind of dump. I understand why he did it just because it's a lot of stuff to get out, but it's that little transition that happens right there is a little jarring. And so if I'm reading this correctly, there is this kind of this net anchored by Darkstone around the city and it prevents skyships from flying directly over over this city. And the city was Treromain. Treromain. And let me put that in the chat. Again, I could be mispronouncing this and doing a cold read here. So again, I'm, I'm getting acquainted exactly at the same time as you. I thought I would just, we could all kind of discover it together and that would be fun. Treromain. Treromain had once belonged to the kingdom of Sumsin which had declared war on Hamera at the same time as the kingdoms of Damor and Lumus did. All right, tracking so far. After Dalus had executed the queen, okay. In return, Dalin had made sure not a single drop of noble blood remained. So devastating was his purge that many years later, when he was defeated, the lands and peoples who once belongs to those kingdoms had no royal claim or identity and simply chose to remain with the new Hamera. Skyship spotted the sky like upside-down boats, though designed to be far more aerodynamic with huge variance between themselves. The larger traders and carriers queued at the registry station to pass through the city's shield net, the shield was made from a net of dark stone anchors, large square blocks of stone that encased a dark stone core with no light shining on the core. Okay, all right, I get it. So the dark stones are completely blocked from light, so they float. With no light shining on the cores, they were fixed in the air, the very same way the tectonic dark stone mantle held the continent in place. The anchors were spaced two meters apart from one another in a diamond pattern that formed a dome over the city. The anchors were so close that any skyship larger than a dory couldn't fit in between them. Any ship that tried to fly through the shield separate to the openings on the ground and at the registry stations would run into the immovable anchors and get shredded to pieces. Shield nets had been developed before Dalen rose to power, but he had certainly employed them to a much larger degree than times before. They were very common, these falls. These, and again, when you hear the word falls like that, falls means days. Even from this distance, Dalen could spot the two battleships patrolling the city's airspace from within the shield. They had very distinct silhouettes. The smaller personal skyships, ferries and coasts, flew much lower to the city and weren't required to land in port. What remarkable and ingenious works of engineering skyships were. Dalen had even designed a few himself. The one, the Annihilator, wasn't something he was too proud of. With skyships, man had made the world a much smaller place. It was going to be a guilty pleasure to fly in one after 20 years of exile. Dalen looked back down to the city with anticipation. Apart from its fine shield, the city's defenses were woeful, only having those two battleships to protect it, with a full-size company of dragoons and a single battleship or warship. Dalen knew he could take the city in an hour. Other commanders might have difficulty with those resources. The city did have a border patrol, shield net, and would have a decent garrison. But Dalen had done more with less. Now that is a sight, Peridin said, looking at the city before them. I agree with you there, Dalen said. But this city is nothing compared to Hydeholm. Peridon reached into a pocket at his side and pulled out some red ribbon. 
He began tying it around his arm, but Dalen snapped at him. Put that away, you blackened idiot. A red ribbon tied around part of the body was a dueling imitation. One could be challenged to a duel without a ribbon, but unless there was sufficient cause for the challenge, there was no shame in turning it down. Ribbons also prompted official duels that would be recorded in the ranking, which were a day's length from a friendly bout. You sound like I'm setting up a picnic in a shade's nest. The stupidity's more comparable than you give it credit. I'm just looking for a duel or two. I'm just looking for a duel or two, Paradin said with no small amount of bravado. Dalen sighed. In the past, he had been by no means an exemption to bragging. But now, having lived for so long, he saw things differently. Yes, the ever-present threat of the shade and the oncoming night meant everyone had the right to bear arms. Well, arms that could fight the shade, at least, which excluded things like shot spikes and rapiers. But that didn't mean one needed to risk their life to prove themselves. If you knew you were strong, that was enough. But tradition said otherwise. You're not ready to compete in the list. I already do. Not the city list. I'm fairly good with a sword, old timer. One of the best in the village. I practiced with my brothers since before I could walk. A good foundation but nothing compared to the precision that comes from being taught by a master. I'm not saying you're a bad match for most in the city, but that's because most know they would be getting eaten alive by professional duelist. I still might win. You have a spare sword on you. Peridon looked confused. Ah, uh, well, yeah, of course. There's three in the trunk. Stop the wagon. Dalen, I... I said stop the wagon. Perrin, Perrin did so. Grab one of your spares and help me down. Perrin stared at him and Dalen scowled back. And got him moving. Dalen's scowl could turn a shade. Perrin was also probably being more accommodating than he would have been otherwise due to the money. With some difficulty and help from Peridon, Dalen managed to get off the wagon. His legs still felt strong, thanks to the bringer's healing. healing. Give it here, Dalen said, holding out his hand. Peridon handed him the longsword. The sword was old, and Dalen could tell by the state of the hilt and scabbard that the blade would need a good oil, but it would do. Dalen drew the blade and threw the scabbard aside. Dalen, what under the light are you doing? Dalen ignored him. It felt right to hold a sword again, and it was distinctly heavier than he remembered. He had grown so weak. Dalen had once been a grand high master of the sword. Not that he would tell Peridon that. It was the highest ranking level in the world, and no more than 50 people were alive at any given time who had attained it. With how frail Dalen was, he would be orders of magnitude from the ability worthy of that rank. But he still possessed the knowledge and experience of that rank, along with the added artificial energy from his recent healing. More than often, more than enough to deal with this misguided snot. Dalen breathed in deeply and forced his body to move. He walked with a much stronger gait than before, though he knew he would pay for it later. That was the thing about being frail. Moving slowly and hobbling wherever he went was a way to conserve his strength. Not that he couldn't force himself to exhort more strength when he wanted to. He just took more effort and was bad for his body. This was going to hurt. Dalen, what is this about? Peridon said, 
as he followed him to a clearing in the shrubby field. Dalen pointed the sword at Paradin and said with steel in his voice, Paradin, I challenge you to a duel. And that is chapter one. That is chapter one of the Shadow of the Conqueror. So interesting world. Interesting world. We've got arch knights who remind me a little bit of Jedi. We've got some interesting mechanics in this world. It's kind of like flat earth. And so if you jump off the edge of the world, eventually you fall all the way back through the sky, back to where you started. There are some kind of creatures called shades who appear to be kind of deadly and they, they make us think at least initially a little bit of some kind of dangerous zombie or vampire. We have no idea of how intelligent they are. You've got these interesting mechanics. And then it appears that the world is, is definitely very um, a warrior culture of some sort, right? Because you've got this, this formalized dueling and recording of dueling and such. So an interesting concept. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to get Mike S. Miller on here with me and he can tell, tell us more about adapting the graphic novel. We'll try and get some updates on when that is coming out. Again, this is Shadow of the Conqueror. And this is by uh, Shadowversity. And let's see. And you can go to his... You can go to his YouTube channel where he talks about some of these things. This is Shadowversity. And he's got links to his books and such. I, I put these links in the description to the video. All right, I am going to take... A short break, and then I think we will get maybe maybe two dozen pages from the Lord of the Rings. I'm feeling like a little bit of, of the Lord of the Rings before dinner. We'll see. I'll put up a uh, I'll put up a notice pretty soon. Anyway, uh, if we don't see you then, we hope to see you again very soon. And God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Aloha and good night.